Now let's talk about how to construct convex sets from convex sets you already know. So, um, in my opinion, the most important thing is the following. Let's formulate this as a theorem. If we have a collection of convex sets, then their intersection is also convex. And the collection does not need to be a finite collection, but can be an arbitrary collection. Okay? So let ci, and i is an element of some index set, um, be a finite or infinite uh, family of convex sets, then the intersection, and we write this as uh, intersection here, uh, is also convex. Okay, let's prove this. Again, we have to just apply the definition, that will be enough. Let x and y be in this intersection, and uh, lambda between 0 and 1. Okay, what does this mean? This means for all i in our index set i, um, x and y are in CI. And now by convexity of CI, so each CI is convex, uh, so we know 1 minus lambda times x plus lambda times y is also in CI for all i in i. Okay, and now we can go back to the, uh, to the intersection. So the intersection of i, uh, okay, I wrote this in the, in the wrong order. So the intersection also contains this. Okay, and this concludes our proof. Um, why do I think that this is so important? Um, because we will see later when we come to separation theorems uh, that it turns out that actually you can um, construct any convex set as uh, an intersection of half spaces. We have seen in the last video that half spaces are convex sets and therefore we have now seen that, now seen that, it, uh, that intersections of half spaces are convex. And it turns out when you have um, uh, an additional property, closeness, um, which means that the set contains all its uh, limit points, we will discuss this later, then um, an intersection of, of uh, then every convex and closed set can be written as an intersection of half planes, and this is important. Um, let's now come to another operation, theorem. Uh, let C1 and C2, uh, yeah, I should write this as uh, subsets of the usual finite dimensional inner product space, um, be convex. By the way, for convexity, uh, we don't need the inner product. We need in the inner product for, for our half spaces because there the inner product appears in the definition. Here this theorem holds for arbitrary vector spaces. Um, um, let C1 and C2 be convex. Then the uh, Minkowski sum Um, and we write this as C1 plus C2, and it's defined uh, according to what you would imagine. So as the sum of all elements x1 plus x2, where x1 is in C1 and x2 is in C2. And then the Minkowski sum is also convex. Okay. 
Um, let's prove this. Okay. Uh, again, definition, let x and y uh, be in c1 plus c2 and uh, let lambda between be between 0 and 1. And from the from this we know that there is a decomposition into the sum of an element in C1 and an element in C2. And this is true for x and y. Okay. So we know that there exist x1, y1 in C1 and x2, y2 in C2 such that x is equal to x1 plus x2 and y is equal to y1 plus y2. Okay, and now we have to come to 1 minus lambda times x plus lambda times y and I will start here. So what, we, what can we say about uh, this? So 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y. Um, we can first of all write this as uh, 1 minus lambda and we have x as x1 plus x2 plus lambda and y is y1 plus y2. All right, um, now we have to somehow exploit the convexity of C1 and C2. So we should regroup this and put together all the elements in C1 and then all the elements in C2. So this is 1 minus lambda and then we have x1 plus lambda y1. And then we have 1 minus lambda x2 plus lambda y2 and we see that this element is in C1 because C1 is convex um, and 1 minus lambda x and, and x1 and y1 are in C1 and therefore this element is also in C1. And then same arguments hold, same argument holds here. So this is an element of C2. And therefore we have the decomposition as uh, the sum of an, of an element in C1 and the sum of an element in C2. And therefore this is also in C1 plus C2. And therefore we have shown that this Minkowski sum is a convex set. So because X and Y were arbitrary elements in the Minkowski sum. Okay, so this concludes our proof. Okay, um, let's come to the final theorem uh, for this video. So, um, in this case, in, in this case, we have two two finite dimensional inner product spaces. So let C uh, be uh, a subset of one of them. And then let L be a mapping from this set, from this space uh, to another space. And this should be a linear and continuous mapping. So, so let this be linear. And continuous is not needed because we have finite dimensional spaces. Um, and continuous is not needed anyway from convexity, but um, usually that's the setting, um, which you always have that you have a linear and continuous mapping between two spaces. In our case, since we are only dealing with finite dimensional spaces, continuity is, uh, is automatic. So uh, let's see what I wanted to prove. Then the image and we can write this as L of C. And L of C is defined as Lx with x in C. Oops. 
is also convex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's prove this. Um, how do we do this? So we uh, again definition let x and y be in L of C and lambda between 0 and 1. Okay, what does it mean to be in L of C? Uh, it means that um, x and y can be written as um, L of some element in C. Um, so that we know that there exists, uh, and I will write x prime and y prime. So this is not a derivative, these are just other, other things, other variables. Um, so we know that these exist such that, yeah, usually I, I had written a colon, yeah, such that x is equal to L x prime and y is equal to L y prime. And now we have to show that 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y is also an element of L of C. And since we, we know that we can write x and, and y in terms of Lx prime and Ly prime, let's do this. And um, this is 1 minus lambda Lx prime plus lambda Ly prime. And now we know that the operator L is linear. And therefore, this is equal to L of 1 minus lambda x prime plus lambda y prime. Okay, and now we know that this element is in L of C because here we have uh, something in C because of the convexity of C. So, okay, this doesn't belong here. So this is an element of C and we take the image via L, so we are in L of C. So this is because of the convexity of C. Okay. And we have shown that for any for arbitrary elements, the straight line is also in the in the in the image. So we have proven the convexity. And now we have seen three different ways to construct convex sets out of other convex sets. So the intersection of an arbitrary collection, the Minkowski sum of two convex sets, and the transformation of a set by a linear operator.